I've been talking about various uh, Western ideologies for more than six years now, uh, one of them in particular being that of feminism, and I'm surprised that I didn't get it up until now. Like, I finally understood. It was revealed to me, because I was watching uh, the last places where you can find uh, third-wave feminists, which is TikTok. You can't find them anywhere else for some reason. Uh, now it's all about uh, transgender issues and other things, uh, the concept that all men are rapists uh, isn't being uttered anymore. It used to trend on Twitter with hashtag yes all men. Uh, we, it's kind of disappeared now. Um, but they believe that, unironically. And uh, in order to believe such a thing is that they changed the definition of consent. Like uh, consent uh, apparently goes away if you're drunk. And we're not talking about drunk to the point where you can't articulate words, because that is understandable. Uh, no, like if you're a little bit tipsy, if uh, you had two glasses of wine, then you can't consent. Which is interesting, because if I have a business partner, and I get him drunk before signing a deal, the contract is valid. Like, no one will say, yeah, well, he, he was a little bit drunk, so he when he signed the dotted line to sell you his car, he couldn't have consented. No, right? But for some reason, feminists believe that if a man takes a woman out at a date and uh, encourages her to drink a couple of glasses of wine, again, not to the point where she's under the table, but enough for her to remove some social inhibitions, uh, then they consider that to be rape. Uh, in fact, uh, the song, Baby It's Cold Outside, was problematic specifically because of that. Objectifying is wrong, right? Like lusting after a woman is wrong. Um, and, and all of the, these things, they consider it to be rape. And, and now I finally realized why that is. And uh, when you think about it, a couple of decades ago, like not even that long ago, society was uh, a lot more religious. And uh, the idea of sex was something sacred. It was uh, part of marriage, basically. Like it, it was something, I can't really say divine because I'm an atheist, but, but it was something special, something wholesome. Right, like a connection between a man and a woman. It wasn't um, something that's uh, trivialized. Uh, so something that becomes like uh, an, an average transaction. And because of that, society shunned uh, away people that uh, would watch pornography or uh, that, you know, they would objectify women and uh, that they, they would be womanizers and other things like that was considered to be taboo. Uh, but we got rid of all of that. Like we, we do not apply that logic in modern society. Unfortunately, there are women who feel a need for that, but they can't really articulate why it's important. Because like now we only have consent, right? Like consent is the only thing that matters. Everything else we got rid of it. But that everything else you, you still see women today wanting that because like they, they would feel cheapened if someone just wants sex from them. Right? But they can't use religion to justify that, well, actually, you know, I, I'm interested in more than that. I'm interested in marriage. I'm interested in that. They, they, don't, they, they can't use the logic because we do not believe in those morals anymore. So what they do is like they, they try to latch on to the only thing we do believe, which is consent. But the problem is like consent um, is so important that if you try to attack it with like trivial things, it's like, well, you know, he took me... Uh, to a dinner and he gave me two glasses of wine so therefore he's a rapist if you say that well that that you're now accusing that person of being a criminal and um you know like ideologically you feel good because you're like punishing him for um not wanting more from you like like you know you, you were interested in actually him wanting a proper relationship with you you were interested in him wanting more from you right but he wasn't interested. Like, like he was just uh, being part of the sexual liberation movement, which says that, well, casual intercourse is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. right? It's not sinful. But the feminist wants it to be sinful. Like, like they still want the previous society where uh, the logic dictated that, well, such behaviors are inappropriate. Like, like for example, 90 years ago, if you are in a Romanian village and um, you take uh, one of the girls out, you know, and you get her drunk, and then you, you have a relationship with her, and uh, you refuse to, to follow up, I mean, her father would beat the living shit out of you. Like, that, that was customary in my country. Probably still is. There, there's even a, 
a word for it. It means uh, it translates to uh, you made a mockery out of her, right? Like you, you, you disrespected her basically, right? So the, the idea that, well, actually it was even more than that. It was if you just talked with the girl, like you were just flirting, you were going out and then suddenly you go with another girl. That, that was incredibly disrespectful. Uh, and uh, her father would definitely have some very harsh words to say to you if uh, he would beat you on the street. And that was the morality back then, and it still is now, to certain extents in my country. Depends on where you are, though. Like, if you're in a city, which is a more progressive place, they don't apply that. But that's how people behave then, towards men, by the way, right? And not towards women, towards men. Like, this was enforced by men to other men. It's like, if you want to go out with a woman, that's fine, but, like, you need to have serious intentions you need to treat her like a proper lady right um but we don't do that anymore like that that is completely removed and the only thing that matters now is consent right so um you do have women that do not want to to be viewed as commodities that do not want to um i guess be part of the patriarchy but at the same time they want to commodify men because otherwise they would be conservative women. They wouldn't be feminists, right? Like they would be religious conservative women that would be like, okay, well, no sex before marriage, blah, 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 blah. So, so they want to like have the cake and eat it too. Like they, they want to be able to commodify men. They, they want to be able to go at a bar to a club and, you know, have a one night stand if they so desire. But they don't want the opposite. They don't want to like a guy, to actually be emotionally invested in a guy and have that guy in exchange uh, commodify them. Right, so now they have to justify it in a way so that society shames that guy, right? Like, like, because th this is all about the power struggle. Like, they do not want equality. They they want to be in a position where they're kind of like aristocrats, right? Like, they they get to behave in a way to other people that they don't want other people to behave to them. This is what it's about, right? Like, we're talking about a subsection of people. We're not talking about women in general. It's just like the the, the feminist ideologue that believes in this thing. Um. And uh, this is why they're against objectification. This is why they're against uh, uh, the idea like, like two people getting drunk in a romantic scenario, uh, but then only the man is responsible, right? Like they will never say, well, the woman is responsible. Because the interesting thing is, right? Like, like if we are to assume that trying to persuade a person to have intercourse with you is rape, then... A lot of women would have to go to prison because women would do that as well. You know, like there are women that, that do try to persuade the men that they like, right? The men that they're attracted to, that it's called seduction. Like we have a word for it. That, that's literally what it is, like to try and seduce someone. It's something that men and women do and it shouldn't be criminal. But again, like through the rationale of third wave feminism, they try to criminalize it. But it's really interesting, you know, uh, it, it's quite fascinating the more you think about it because... Um, this ideology, which which replaced previous norms, is trying to adapt itself so that the norms still apply, but under different justification. Because those norms don't exist because of the patriarchy. Like it's not it's not that the patriarchy decided to impose these norms. It's part of the human experience. Like human beings created these norms, right? Because women do not like to be treated like a commodity. So their fathers, and their brothers, and their friends. Uh, would punish people that treated them like a commodity. But but you need the social justification so that the punishment can happen, right? Like, people need to know that you're not allowed to behave in this way, but when you remove, like, religion, which used to be the justification, it's like, if you do this, it's sinful, God will punish you. If you remove that, then what do you have left? Like, what what, what are the arguments, basically? And, and this is the arguments that they come up with, which, uh, unfortunately, do not hold, because they're ridiculous. They're, they're, again, like, like, if you believe that having a glass of wine means you can't consent, then any business meeting that happens should happen without alcohol, right? Like, if you have a board meeting, there should be no alcohol on the table, because anyone that drinks... And by the way, like, that, that also raises an interesting question. Like, what if you have two business partners that sign a very expensive deal... Uh, and they're drunk, right? Like, they, they actually did have a lot to drink. Who's responsible? Like, who, who is taking advantage of whom? What if, what if they both need to consent for something to happen? Like, is the contract invalid? What, what if it's something where it's not about, like, one person giving something? What if they just form a corporation? Right? So, like, two people, they get wasted. 
And then after that, they sign a contract and they form a corporation. Is the corporation a legal entity or not? What if two people get married, right? Like they're incredibly drunk and they decide to get married. Like, notice how it doesn't apply, but it's, it's an interesting thing. Let me know what you guys think, though. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.